thing before we take a break. You know what else bothers me? What happens? I click edit. I start typing. I'm all done. I hit enter. Enter is actually putting a line break in my in, in my text. It is not saving. Boo! In some cases, maybe that's what you would want. But we don't want multiple line inputs here. We want enter to actually save. So speaking of doing something when a certain keyboard key is pressed, let's learn how to do that. There are several DOM events related to pressing keys on the keyboard. Key down is one that fires as soon as you hit down before you even let up. If you actually watch for that one, you may notice it feels super, super weird. Um, key press is probably the one we actually want to look for. So when we run to the list item, let's see here. We're looking for a click on that button. We're looking for a click on this button. We're looking for a click on this button. We could also look for a key press on that span. The span is the thing that's acting like an input. So we could watch for key press events that take place when that thing has the focus. So item dot query selector. Well, look, look, we've already got that one, don't we? Yeah, it's right up here. We're already setting its text content. I don't need to find it again. So we're already finding flick name and setting its text content. So instead of doing this as a, a one liner on three lines, I'm going to actually say const uh, name span equals item dot query selector flick name. Then I'll say name span dot text content. And then while we've got it, name span dot add event listener. The event we're listening for this time is key press. What do we want to do? Well, we want to do the same thing that happens when you click that button while it's editable. I'll make a new method for this. This dot save on enter. And once again, we will bind this so that this will be the instance of our class. And I will pass in the flick. Go ahead and make save on enter. That takes the flick and an event. I don't know what I want it to do yet, so I'll just throw a debugger in there. Let's just make sure this much works. So we're hoping that this fires when we press enter inside that field. Refresh. Add a couple. Let's hit edit. Okay, now my focus is in there. I hit enter. Okay. Good. Now what about if I hit L? Still fired. Still pressed a key, right? I'm not yet looking specifically for the inner key. I'm just looking for any key press. So it's going to run every time. So we're going to need to check to see which key was pressed. So we've got an event object as always. This time it's a keyboard event. Looks like there's a code here, ev.code, key L. Looks like there's also car code. This is 108. What else did I see there? It's another code. There's also key code. There's code, car code, and key code. Looks like car code and key code do the same thing. Which one should we use?
What about... Oh, there's also just plain key. L. Neat. Let's let's try enter again. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So with enter, event.code is enter. Car code is 13. I bet key code is also 13. And key ah, is enter. Any advice from the documentation on this? Let's see about keyboard events. Keyboard event object. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff here. Car is read only. Been dropped from DOM level three events, so we're not going to use car. Car code is deprecated. You should use keyboard event dot key instead. So it looks like dot key is the one we really want. The others are deprecated. So event dot key enter is what we're looking for. So inside save on enter, we can say if event dot key triple equal the string capital E enter, then do a thing. What do we want it to do? How about this dot toggle editable? If it's editable, we want to make it not editable anymore and we want to save the changes, right? There's already a function that does exactly that. So that's all we need to do. Toggle editable, that's going to expect the flick. Ooh, and it's also going to expect an event that has the button as the target, right? Look at toggle editable. We're getting the button by looking at the event target. Now that's the only place we're using that event. But we could maybe do this a different way. Okay, what if we get the item by saying event.target.closest and when we call toggle editable here, we do still pass in the event. It's a keyboard event now. So event.target might be the button or it might be the span that we're typing in. But either way, the closest flick should be the LI. So this might still work. But that button, we're gonna have to get a different way now. Because the event target may or may not be the button. So we better say const btn equals item dot query selector dot edit dot button. And just get it the same way we're getting everything else. Makes sense. It would have broken before because it would have expected the event target to be the button, and it's not. Refresh. Let's make sure the button still works. Click the button, it becomes editable. I change something. I type the exact same thing. Jupiter ascending. Save button still works. If we do it the other way, 21 jump street, enter, it worked. Now it works whether we hit enter or we click the button. Pretty cool. What about this? What if I, let's like tab through here. Can you see what I'm focused on? Tab, tab, tab. Oh, it doesn't stop on it, does it? Oh, well. All right, cool. Save changes when pressing 
Enter. Good. There's more we could do to this thing. We can make it prettier. We can make the move up and down buttons. It's kind of more of the same a little bit. There are a couple of tricks I used um, with CSS to make the um, buttons look different if they're disabled. <laughs> Stuck in my chair. Um, so move up, basically, you want to insert before the thing that's above it. To move down, here's a trick for move down. Just move the one below it up. And that's a little easier. You don't have to write the whole thing twice. No big whoop. But I think basically we've learned what we need to learn out of this thing. We can fiddle with the DOM. We can use classes. We can use methods. We know what this does. And we've tried to keep an array in sync with what's in the DOM. And it was a lot of work to do that. Um, so now we're going to learn React and arguably the easy way to do some of this stuff. Now you have to wrap, wrap your whole mind about what React is and how it works. But a lot of this stuff is a lot easier once you get going and kind of makes more sense. Um, but first, we do definitely have to start thinking in React. So we're going to learn how to do that. Uh, but first, let's take a 10-minute break. All right.